the, of the meeting at 632. Um, so, quick order of business. Well, let me just um, make a couple notes regarding uh, agenda and then just a procedural note. Um, I think we will have a short executive session at the end just to discuss midterm evaluation. Um, and uh, and then also just kind of procedurally, um, Mia, who I see is remote, is going to be joining me in the weekly meetings with Libby uh, to help plan and set out agendas. Um, so we are starting that, I think, as of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, so that the idea behind that is just to get an extra voice, uh, also to make sure that you know, Mia is kind of as informed as I am when um, she needs to step into the chair role. Um, and so we'll start that tomorrow. Um, and so on to the next order of business, which is public comment. Do we have any public comment? We have one person in the room. Anyone on uh, Zoom who wants to comment, uh, please raise your hand. don't see anyone so in the room uh, please step up to the the table and um, also announce your name just so we have sure absolutely the hello everyone my name is Ben Maniscalco I'm a uh, parent of a student at Union Elementary School and I am the husband of a second grade teacher at Union Elementary School and also a formal a former special educator in the Lamoille North Supervisory Union on Friday, the 27th of January, a student at Union Elementary School was having a, a student in crisis at Union Elementary School was having an intense behavioral episode that occurred in the hallway of one of the primary grade wings of the building. The student was screaming, uh, kicking and punching the door to their own classroom and then proceeded to move to another classroom and continued screaming, kicking and punching the entry door to the second classroom while standing outside of it. This episode went on for about 45 minutes, screaming, kicking and punching the entire time. In some cases, students were unable to leave their classrooms. Um, or needed an adult, I'm sorry, to go to the bathroom unless they had an adult escort. Some students were visibly crying and reported being scared that the student in question could have perhaps broken the glass panel on the classroom door. Teachers reported feeling as though they were, quote, under siege in their own classrooms. The student was monitored by adult staff. My presumption is that these adults wanted to monitor the student to avoid further escalating behavior. No one's blaming the student. No one's singling out the student. My question is, why was the student not guided or if absolutely last resort necessary, physically restrained and taken to a safe space so that the other kids did not experience trauma and interruption to their learning environment, in, I'm sorry, in what is supposed to be a safe learning environment. This was not the first incident. Um, these are occurring in other grades as well, perhaps not to that degree of severity. Uh, it is understandable that some students will have such behavioral episodes because that is the reality of public school. Um, teachers have worked extremely hard uh, comprehensively with proactive strategies to minimize all behavioral outbursts. However, at times, even the best framework is not enough. Therefore, my question is, what is the school's plan to address escalated violent behavior with some level of accountability? Many teachers feel as though students are having big behaviors with little processing afterwards or accountability, um, suggesting that the school needs consistent protocols in place from administration. All qu are qualified, I'm sorry, this is a question, are qualified and licensed district personnel afraid to restrain a child because of the perceived impact on their reputations? Are classroom teachers supposed to bear the brunt of the most severe behavioral issues within the school environment? Is there a consistent protocol in place from administration to keep teachers and students safe in extremely tense and emotionally heightened situations? May the school be more affected with an intervention room model similar to which um, has been placed at, up at Johnson Elementary School for over 10 years. In such a model, highly qualified behavioral support personnel are in place to support students when they experience unpredictable and sometimes violent behaviors. And if they must absolutely last resort, physically remove the students from a certain setting in order to keep all students st and staff safe. I have Vermont State Board Rule 4500 con concerning restraint and seclusion to be used in order to create a maintain, I'm sorry, create and maintain a positive and safe learning environment. Uh, maybe these schools haven't needed the protocols in the past. This is our reality now. We hear it in Bristol, we hear it in Bennington. It's here now, it's been here for a while. Um, this is our new reality. No one's singling out any student. Um, but 
uh, students, one student in crisis should not hold the entire wing of the elementary school hostage for 45 minutes to an hour um, with qualified licensed personnel watching them. Just, it just really doesn't make sense to me that this is the point where we are. Great. Thank you. No, thank you very much. I really appreciate the input. Thank you. Uh, all right. Not seeing anyone online. Um, let's go to uh, consent agenda. Um, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Jill, do I have a second? Thank you, Seiji. Uh, any discussion? Um, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The consent agenda passes. All right, and now we welcome back Nathan to um, kind of pick up on the visioning process that. Uh, we have started and I think um, for one thank you for all the the great work and thanks for coming again um, and I think one thing that we probably want to focus on this spring now that the budget has passed is um, you know really wrapping up the, the visioning process and getting an idea of what we want to do with it and I think Nathan is going to talk to us about priority setting uh, which is um, which is integral in the uh, new uh, policies that we are likely going to adopt in uh, the latter part of the meeting. All right. Um, good to see you all again. Uh, I, I'll wait till the camera's on me. <laughs> yeah. uh, and Mia, see Audible on the. Mia, can you hear me? At home. Um, my name is Nathan Suter, and I am here consulting with the board to support them on priority setting. <coughs> Looks like Mia can hear me. Okay. Uh, so I think I've got about 50 minutes to work with you tonight, and I, uh, the process I've designed is not a sit in our seats, um, talk to each other across the room process, but could be adapted to do that if you wish. Um, we, we can move. I figured. Um, <laughs> it's one of these. Is it a made for TV event or not? Um, first, let me just talk about my thoughts about how you slash we might approach this. Um, I sent, I, in case, so for Mia and Zach and Kristen, I don't know if Kristen's, uh, looks like Kristen's Kristen not. Kristen had a babysitting. <laughs> she had real life. Yeah, real life came up. Room, okay. So. Um, Mia, did you get the materials I sent via email? If you didn't see those, please check those because that's what I'm working from. Okay. Okay, so um, I think if I were a board member, this process might take place over a few sessions because I think you have, uh, it's, it would be iterative and I think the first thing might be identifying areas that you're particularly focused on um, and maybe making some distinctions between what is important sort of long term and what is urgent for a shorter term this year, this year and a half, and then trying to figure out how to establish a, a high level pool of uh, these are the most important issues to this district right now. Um, and I think that's a, so part of that would include at some point naming 
what your focus areas are and then what fits underneath those focus areas. So here's, here's an example. If, if you had broad agreement that academics are a major reason that the district exists, you might simply say academics. But you might also say um, one of our goal areas or one of our priorities is excellence in teaching, teaching and learning. So um, semantics can matter. And so that there will probably be some discussion on that. And we'll do some of that tonight. Um, and another thing, another piece about the sort of the contrast between urgent and important is where I think things get interesting for a school board, which is for someone in Libby's position and the rest of the uh, school administration and educators, they're on a long, long trajectory of many, many systems and many, um, you know, the, the career, career path of a, of a teacher, the uh, educa educational path of a student, um, the life and durability of the facilities, et cetera. And so that's why I think the question of urgency versus important is, in, is useful because I suspect that, of course, on a long-term vision, academics or academic excellence or learning would be the highest priority almost all the time. But if the district or if the school board feels though as though um, teaching and learning is well under control in the, in the near term, you might prioritize in the next year or so something more highly than that. Um, the example I used in this document that I just handed out uh, puts operations, or in this case, sort of facilities and maintenance, as a low priority for urgency. It may be that this school board feels as though with the capital spending plan and the five-year facilities plan that um, the facilities area is always important but is not urgent as a sort of priority for the board or priority for the district in the next year or two because it is sort of well <coughs> structured and well taken care of. Um, so I, mostly I'm introducing that idea and I want, to, I want you to think about um, maybe being willing to, to decide, okay, this, you know, this area feels like it's on fire and we really need to attend to that. This area feels as though we always want to, we always care about it, but it's under control and the, and the district is, is doing this well. Uh, is that, am I making sense? Is that resonating? It's, so it's the little urgent, important. Yeah. Important, not urgent. Mm -hmm. that. Not important, not urgent. <laughs> Right, right. Some people would do that in a quadrant. Not important, urgent. Right, yes. and so the and you know in the examples I gave, sort of two lists that are sorted differently by you know rank rank of importance, um, and the other and then I say, uh, it's also probably useful to think about priorities for the district or strategic goals, not necessarily as a ranked list, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, but rather as a pool of all these things are important one priority or one goal might realistically uh, take two or three years to attend to and another might be resolved in six months. And so it, it's, I think it's also useful to you know, be mindful of the, of the complexities of some of these things if you're trying to, to make change or, or gain traction. Uh, so what I'm proposing for, and, and then though we don't have a ton of time together this evening, this is a very capable board with a number of people on it who are able to facilitate process like this without me being present. And so what I'm hoping to do is that this can act, can act as a scaffold or as a process that you all can replicate without me in the room or without somebody else, although I'm always happy to work with you, um, acknowledging that we probably aren't going to resolve all the school board or the district priorities tonight uh, to the point of sort of them being ready for print and then to be handed off to the administration. Sound good? Yes. All right, so um, for me, it's always useful to, to respond to something that's drafted, even if it's not the right fit for what you're hoping for. So the example that I gave earlier of um, trying to attend to a focus area that we might call academics by calling it excellence in teach and teaching and learning, you may not like those the, that word choice, and that's fine. So what I'd like to do is uh, have us get up. I'm, I've printed some of these out in large type. I've also got the backside of a bunch of blank pieces of paper, and I've got some big black markers. And if you want to come up with your own focus area, um, and I can think of others uh, that I didn't print out, 
let's do a little bit of that. Let's see where people are thinking about how we name these sort of high level um, focus areas. And then let's do a little bit of sort of scenario work where we think about, okay, we heard a lot of community input in the last six months about, uh, or eight months about bullying in our schools. If I care a lot about bullying, where does that fit underneath these focus areas? And um, how, you know, how do I as a board member, how do we as a board create a priority area, if that's a, if that's a big priority, that um, ensures that the administrative team is resourced and focused on creating an environment where, where uh, bullying is less likely to happen, for example. Uh, I think the board has also heard about reading and uh, you know, learning around reading. So um, it's not the board's job to decide which curriculum tools the district uses to teach reading, but if you care about the district really focusing on reading and say students achieving proficiency at grade level, what language do you choose to use that <coughs> empowers Libby and the district to really focus on that, uh, you know, acknowledging that there's an opportunity cost to everything, right? If you really focus on one thing, probably some other things are, are maybe not being as well attended to. So um, let's, uh, I'm trying to think in terms of Orca Media. So I don't know your name. Sean. Sean. I can film anything. Well, yeah, so I might have you move over when we close those doors over there, we can use that as a, as a sort of working wall. Uh, so I'm going to move everybody over there, and we're going to work over there. Okay? All right. Come on up. I love the confidence, Sean. I can film anything. I got it. Don't you worry. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. Yeah. I think you, you go with the handheld, the Blair Witch Project. <laughs> it's going to be great. Let me get a sense of what's happening. We're just sitting there. Yeah. Yeah. handout but or you have this in the email so I made as I said I made up a number of these focus area titles uh, and I'm gonna start just taping them up to the wall you can untape them rearrange them you could put check marks I don't think we're at the point of voting yet but if you you know others that have occurred to me since I sent this to the printer include right you could you could choose to say um, you can choose to, to address. I just pull up in it. Yeah. We have Mia remotely. Is there a way for her to be able to? Mia, if I give you my. She's got my. I'll get my. Okay. Okay. So you don't have to about. okay. Text me, Mia, with ideas. Yeah, or, or even call. We can just put you on speakerphone with Libby. Fantastic. All right. So, for example, what if, you, what if we really want to attend to student needs and readiness for learning, right? Are we, are we able to support students with mental health needs well enough in our schools? Do we want to do that in our schools? Uh, what if the thing you think is most important for the next two years is recruit, retain, and develop high quality staff at every position? Right? Like, any of those things are possible. So have at it. Don't accept my drafts. Make your own. So we're picking what we well, want I'm just going to start ahead. sticking these up, but they're blank sheets of paper. Um, this are, we, are we adding to it, or are you like? <laughs> I would I would add to it, or you can modify. Yeah. Right. So so partly the reason I do this is you might look at this and say, oh, that's totally off base. Great. How is it off base, and what would you prefer to see? Right. And I don't. 
if I'm Libby and if I'm the chair of the board, yeah. I don't want 11 strategic goals. No. Way too much, right? Five, maybe. Five is my target. So think about that. If you've got to reduce it, how many do you want, Libby? <laughs> Three? Okay. <laughs> um, but, but keep that in mind, right? This, uh, and it might, again, that's, I think that's part of why it's interesting to talk about important versus urgent, because it may be that it, there's something that's important, but it's, but it's actually doing okay right now. So if you don't make that a strategic goal, it doesn't mean it's not important. It just means not right now. Thank you, Jill. Yeah. And if you don't start drafting new ones soon, I'm just going to have you vote on these, and we're going to roll with it. And then you'll be really mad. I'm trying to see if there's anything truly missing. Well, well, I'm thinking about the recruitment and retention and the diversity combination, which is part of the goal that is overlap some of these. Well, how big are these umbrellas? Like, could that fit into the Jedi? Right, so yeah. can I talk to that for a second? Amen. So, so just a second, diversity and inclusion, you can certainly <coughs> make an argument that oh, we're going to be attentive to justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion in everything that we do. Yeah. And that, that might work, right? Yeah. Libby might be able to say to the district leadership and to teachers, you, we need to attend to this. Here are some ways we're going to attend to it. Go do it. But it's also possible that in the, in the sort of um, heat of battle, or you know, the, the year the, that happens in COVID, or any who knows what, that something like that gets lost if it's not top level, if it's not named, and if it's not prioritized. Right? If I'm a university that says, yeah, we care about diversity, equity, and inclusion, but I don't create an office for that, or I don't create, you know, a dean, a dean of, of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Sorry about that. Oh, you could still be here. Yeah, I'm just making it better. Just clip it to my lapel, <laughs> and then we're going to stop talking. Um, right? If you don't, if you don't create a position, a dean position at a university, dealing with this, do you then lose focus on it because there are so many other things to focus on? So that's the kind of thinking I want you to do. Is okay. Wait a minute. What are the things that are most important, most urgent right now for the next year and a half, two years? Let's make sure we name them. Are they, is everything you want to consider there? And if not, add more. And then once we've done that, then let's narrow it and try to prioritize. The one on the right, uh, this, this version of excellence in teaching and learning includes some sub bullets, right? Student achievement, uh, reduce or eliminate the achievement gap. Yeah, right? that's. Uh, recruit, retain, develop high quality staff at all positions, which might be a strategy in service of excellence in teaching and learning. Um, fully staff and train for multi-tier systems of support excellence, right? If you feel like we've got this system, MTSS, and it, we're just not quite getting there on implementation, we, we're willing to focus on that. That starts to, you know, the other question is what's too granular for the board? And then uh, identify, implement, and train staff on s a social emotional learning approach and curriculum, right? Do we have an SEL curriculum? Maybe not. Uh, even if we do, is everybody trained on it, right? So this is an example of, of what might fall below or fall underneath one of these focus areas. I feel like recruitment and retention could almost be its own item because it's, yeah. a, it's a non-trivial task. Right, that's, that's really, really important. important. Right okay, cool. I mean, to me, a lot's better than what how specific we want to be because, you know, I think we're always going to want excellence in teaching and learning, right? And I'm just going to text Mia some of these. Yeah. 
she's got it. All those are printed, all those are in her email. Okay, but just so she knows what we're all looking at. Okay. And I can help her make notes too. Yeah, thank you. Um, you focus on the discussions. We want to get this to three, <laughs> sort of. Of course, we have to add. To I mean, I need to get to Well, if you think, if you think that, yeah. <laughs> I think one way to think about it, if I can weigh in, is whatever your the board's priorities are, the board is saying, I want regular information on this and what what you're doing in the district. Of course we're working on all of those things, but you know, multiple pathways, for instance, may not reach the level of priority where the board needs to hear multiple times a year information on multiple pathways. Maybe it is. The social emotional piece that's under here, I kind of don't want it in there because I kind of want it to be in this group as its own really important thing. These two seem much very sort of similar, and I would like to see that social emotional piece under there. And personally, that's as important to me as as excellence in teaching and learning. And I think adding way. on to what Libby said, like. Like, what specifically do we want kind of information on and really, like, want to hone in on with how we're doing? Because, for instance, like, I think we, we always want excellence in teaching and learning, but do we just want general excellence in teaching and learning? Or, like, what well, a component in the, of that is closing the academic achievement gap, and we know that gap is there, and we know that it really needs to be addressed. So we want to hone in on that, and we want to focus on that as kind of like an information point and an action point for the next year or two rather than just getting like general um, yeah general updates on how excellent we're doing and teaching because that that piece could get lost in an overall presentation on excellence because because we could in some ways be doing excellent and you know and it could just be like and by the way we've got still you know, this, this part of it where we're not excellent, but we're excellent in all these places that we're not really worried about because we're never excellent. Does that make sense? Yeah, also, wouldn't it depend on if you, in the excellence in learning and teaching, if you need that academic achievement gap, yeah, yeah, as a top bullet point, yeah. you, you're calling out that, hey, this is, the, this is where we need the yeah. information. Um, but also, you know, including the other excellence in teaching, but not losing sight of that you I, I, I agree with the, the fact that for me also academic achievement closing the gap um, is, is one of the top um, top points so we're all so we're going to take like three to five of these and then are we going to create a smart goal for each one of those categories for the year so this is a question I'm going to pass it right back to you uh -huh. right so this this group and even this district hasn't, as far as I know, really done a strategic plan or set strategic goals in the past, so there's not a pattern. At the board uh, level. At the board level, sorry, right. So, right, so you, there's a continuous improvement plan, right? So the, the district stat, uh, team has already done this in that through that lens and does it in more local ways often. Um, that's why I, I'm trying to telegraph that I do think it's complicated, so choose carefully, right? If, if um, belonging, safety, and wellness is the place under which uh, social, emotional, behavioral learning <coughs> resides. Is that okay, or does this need to be higher up, right? Right? Or does this need to be the top level goal? And some things. And then this belonging, safety, and wellness is like okay. I think that's enough under control, but because we're really focused on this. Well, I also get a little bit like sort of um, mixed up with you know like. Libby obviously runs these types of meetings for her admin team and has is working on smart goals within the district already. And now as a board, we're going to be setting some sort of like priority categories 
and then we might be creating goals, but those goals will be for our work as a board or for the district? Um, probably both, right? So to, to my read of that, for example, uh, one, of the thing, one of the reasons I like this and I like some of the new policy language you all are considering mm -hmm. is that it starts to bridge a challenge between the board and superintendent relationship, right? In the worst case, superintendent's underperforming and the board has like only a really big stick, like you're fired, or not so many carrots. It really depends upon a good working relationship. And so the policy language says quarterly reporting. Quarterly is pretty frequent if you're a big district administration. Um, but it, what it does is it creates that sort of ongoing communication bridge feedback loop. So I like that piece of the policy language. And then the question is, um, the, it seems fair to the administrative team to know what you're asking for. What are you paying most attention to? Like if we imagine a dashboard, uh, yep, we care about all this stuff, but these five things or these three things are the most important right now. Mm -hmm. um, and what, are, what does right now mean? I don't know, you know, 12 months, 18 months. And like I said, some of it might be three years, you know, if you were to set a reasonable timeline, and some of it might be six months. So I think that's another, they're, they're sort of multiple layers, right? Mm -hmm. So I think, but, but I'm watching this board, and you all are charged with being sort of conduits for the community. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, you have folks saying, we've had these horrible experiences with, with some bullying incidents, what's going on? And you want to be able to respond to that, mm -hmm. and the administration wants to be able to respond to that. Similarly, uh, hey, I want my kid to be more successful at reading. What's going on with that? And if you feel, if you, the board, feel as though, oh, we really need to focus our district's energies to address some of these things, right? Reading, to me, is going to fit underneath something else, probably, because it's pretty specific, and you're not in charge of choosing the curriculum. But you might find language that says, we're going to close the achievement gap, right? We're sick, of, we're sick of academic performance outcomes being closely correlated to uh, income or closely yeah. correlated, right? Damn it, we're better than that. Let's make it so. OK. And then it's up to, you know, in case Libby weren't focused on that, then she and her team have to figure out how to do that. So, I mean, I can be more prescriptive, but I don't think that it's my place to sort of decide. So are we right now individually ranking these in our heads? So here's what I, well, I'm going to go back. Let me pause. Is anybody noticing absence, right? So it's always the hardest question. Is there something you really care about that you've been hearing a lot about <coughs> that is not represented up here or couldn't fit within one of these things? And if so, please write it on a piece of paper and get it up here. Second of all, like, close the achievement gap could be a product of, an outcome of, excellence in teaching and learning. Or it could be that closing the achievement gap is the goal, gosh darn it. And this is a strategy, right? Excellence in teaching and learning is a strategy to serve that, as is recruit, retain, retain and develop high quality staff at all positions, right? Your theory of change might be, <coughs> We can't close the achievement gap without excellent teachers. We are losing, I don't know if this is true, we're losing excellent teachers to South Burlington because they pay more. Don't Let's know. Let's not start that rumor. Don't know, <laughs> don't know that's not sorry. Accurate. Not accurate, okay. <laughs> um, we, are, we're having, we have an, we have an empty position, we have two empty positions at these highly skilled areas. Special and education. Special education, we're having trouble filling them. Mm -hmm. What would move the needle on that, right? So that, to me, that's the work of this. Can we ask Libby, do you see anything missing? Uh, I mean, without looking at them earlier to think about it, mm -hmm. uh, I think those are broad enough where you can put pretty much anything inside of it. Right. I feel like recruitment should be on its own still because in my mind one of the areas of recruitment or retention that, I, that you know, comes up in my head is the, the principals. So it's not necessarily just the instructors that, you know, that we want to retain. It's 
a step up from this one. Would there be a different category that you would put it into, or would it be its own just category? I feel like it's, it's important enough. Okay, so in the interest of time, I'm going to yeah. push. I'm going to give you each three stickies. We're going to do a, just a quick round of, if I choose three of these, whether I pick you, <coughs> that are my, that feel most urgent or most important to me, and you kind of, you don't have to cue to my model of thinking about that. Um, but please, let's, let's do that. Let's do a little straw, straw poll here. going to give me a chance to participate. It's a little bit difficult remotely. Thumbs up. Okay. So just just have her unmute when she's ready to just tell Hey, Mia, just unmute your mic. Or you can text. No. To <clears throat> can you hear me? Yeah. 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 I can't tell if these are combined, but I would put excellent, excellent in teaching and learning with closing the gap and vote for one, vote for that. Um, belonging, safety, wellness, and put that with the HHB and vote for that. And then I haven't decided yet on a third one. Oh, connection with community and accountability. There it is. Found it. Yeah, I really think like inclusion and belonging, belonging, safety, you can't read what's under there, and wellness, and the and then partially the justice, equity, diversity. Those three like have a lot in common. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Right. Right, and the, the connection with community and accountability, <laughs> I created that partly to demonstrate the complexity, right? <coughs> you could uh, think that most of the accountability is about sort of accountable to the community or connection to the community, but accountability could it be its, own, its totally, it's completely own thing. So I think, so let, this is, we've got a lot of agreement. Um, Mia, just to read out loud, uh, academic achievement, close the gap, is I think the highest vote getter um, with some support, maybe underneath that for recruit, retain, and develop high quality staff at all positions. Uh, next up is belonging, safety, and wellness. And then connection with community and accountability. Uh, meet student needs, and that was ready to learn, meals, mental health, et cetera. Uh, that wasn't sent to you via email because that was generated on site. Um, and then just justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion receiving one vote. So question to the- Just as a side note, I've never seen that represented as Jedi. Yeah. And I will not be using that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As so, a Star Wars fan. <laughs> I, sometimes, I sometimes use that because I think sometimes for groups, um, adding justice to that helps people think through that lens, which makes it less, um, makes it feel a little bit less like, wait, I'm about to be accused of being a racist. 
I'm not engaged in this topic, whereas, oh, and we all care about justice, and then through that lens, we can enter a lot of this other stuff. Another favorite to add on there is belonging, B. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> good. Okay, so that was good. Quick, quick sort. If, let's talk about academic achievement gap. Um, am I, is this an essential, is recruit, retain, and develop high quality staff at all positions? sort of an essential component of that, or is that outside? Um, you know, I, I think what I would have you do is now start building what's below this. So, so far Libby is getting her wish, which is there are three top, top level goals. And then, then the question is sort of how, how specific do you want to get, or, or right, like, I like this one, because it's, it's specific, People know what that means. It's something the district, in, in not we're not alone, struggles with, right? Um, then you might there, then the interrogation, not the interrogation, but the yeah, the, the the discussion with Libby and her team would be okay. What are going to be good indicators? You know, is there going to be anything meaningful mid-year? What would be the adjustments that would happen if we weren't hitting our goal? Right. The, to me, that gets to be pretty interesting. Belonging, safety, and wellness, holy cow, it's a gigantic umbrella, right? Um, is that where social, emotional, and behavioral learning fits? Is that not? You know, uh, talk to me more. And, and here, so. I like the word you use, indicators. Yes. Right. Underneath it. Like, it doesn't necessarily need to be written as a smart goal, I don't think. I think that's our administration goal, what Emma was talking about, or that would be our administration's work. But to have board indicators, that would give guideposts as to what you want to be reported out on, right? And I also think that it would be nice as a board to have just board-centered SMART goals for ourselves. Like, what is the work that we are going to do as a board over the next year for these three priorities? That supports what Libby's doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. or just supports these three priorities. You know, the work, I think it's a practice what you preach. It's not like, here, we're setting this agenda and that we need to make it happen. It's like, we're also committed to making this happen as a board within whatever our capacity is to do that. Would it be okay to put the three at the top and see how many we can fit underneath them? Uh, yes, but uh, I think that the, there's a, I think those would be most powerful if they are not, not too diluted, mm -hmm. right? If they're focused, right, the achievement gap is, that's pretty focused. How we get there, I'm not sure that road is clear, but so we'll put these up here and move everything else to the side. And you can also, um, you don't have to acquiesce to Libby's desire to have only three, right? One of these other ones you could, you could decide, no, we're gonna go with more than three. I'm feeling good about those three. Um, I, I keep thinking about the large umbrella for the Jedi piece, and I'm wondering if there's a way that it can, you know, it, 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 it seems to deserve effort and intention to include it in the three, each of the three. It's, it's, it doesn't seem to be extractable from anything. It's definitely not. I mean, all of them, yeah, you're not going to get student blogging unless you're focused on justice, equity, and diversity and inclusion. You're not going to close the achievement gap unless you're focused on okay. community equity. Pretty major Venn diagrams. Uh, well, it's yeah, so and I think community connection and accountability is making sure that we're reaching all of our community members, mm -hmm. um, yeah, which also goes to What I like about the academic achievement is it's maybe I'm wrong, but it, it feels more quantifiable, mm -hmm. um, right. which then drives you to well, you know, you can one of the ways to do it is using Jedi, and mm -hmm. the other, you know, so you can fit other things, but the goal is quantifiable, which is what I like, and so I'm trying to come up with how can we quantify other, you know, what are the other things that we can quantify that can become the goals. So I keep, I keep drifting over here to my yellow sticky notepad. 
if you're sitting here thinking about what's quantifiable, well, what would the indicator be, right? It doesn't have to be only Libby who comes up with, here's what would be on the dashboard to indicate that. So if you're having thoughts about that as we are talking, or you're having thoughts about what contributes to success at this priority, write them down and put them up there, right? This is a, you can really be workshopping this in live time as we go. Maybe a suggestion is that Jedi could be a theme for one of the indicators for each goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good suggestion. I like it, yeah. So for belonging, safety, and wellness, I keep thinking back to the, the presentation that Jess Marie did um, with the, the dashboard, the behavior dashboard, and that that is going to become a a different piece of software that's going to be more effective and it's going to drive a lot of efforts to support teachers and support kids to behave in a way that's effective for them and fair for them and helpful for the kids next to them. I don't know if yeah, I, just a behavior dashboard is what's going to quantify the belonging, safety, and wellness, but you know, cover safety. But maybe, maybe. Jess and you and everyone else can figure out some kind of indicators that fit under that category that you that are accessible um, because it's tough to measure how, kids, how safe kids feel. But you could you could measure the behavior the behaviors that you are tracking. That's what I was just asking, Libby, around student input and um, how that can be. You know, if they're if they have input into this process at all, and I think there are surveys and that sort of thing that you could use with students to um, ask them about how they feel about the goals that, that we've had that we set up and how well we've achieved them, mm -hmm. and if they have <coughs> suggestions for things that might make it better. And Lynn, are you seeing that primarily in the belonging, safety, and wellness, or across these? Um, I think you could have something that would look at all three. Yeah. I think, you know, obviously for the community, you have know, you know, input with the community and community surveys as well. Mm -hmm. So then, just a, just a question in response to that. It might start to be useful to figure out which of these responsibilities sit with Libby and the administrative team in terms of reporting. And are there instruments, are you all in charge of the community survey instrument, or is that also administrative? I mean, I don't want to put too much on the board, because we just think, honestly, yep. we don't have a ton of capacity. And I, mean, I think certainly being a bridge to the community is a big board role. Um, yeah, I don't know. And part of our role is helping to set the priorities and, you know, and bringing that out. Uh, I think that piece right there is the one that needs the most fleshing out. But yes. the other two are obvious to educator minds like me. <laughs> yeah. You know that I think we could do a pretty good yeah, job. These two. That's yeah. also, I think, where the board has the biggest role. Um. Yeah, I think accountability for me is a, is a big theme. You know, like Nathan raised a couple of sort of like our red flag issues that have boiled to the surface over the past year one being HHB and the other being like literacy special ed. Um, and so, and it's not, it's not just those things, there's other stuff that when, when community members come to us with concerns, I'm not always seeing good follow through or just not, not knowing what's, it kind of goes into this like this for me pers as an individual board member. So I don't know what the accountability piece is on the other end to sort of circle back to those folks and make sure that concerns are being followed up on and what progress is being made and I saw it more clearly with social emotional well-being was a big topic in all of the like ESSER fund was in sessions and then there was like clear action from the admin team on that and in the budget and you know moving forward and there was 
quite a few sort of reports out on here's what we did with that red flag issue that arose. I think the one big difference is I was a part of those conversations and if people are writing to the school board directly or speaking only to the school board, I'm not a part of those conversations. Yeah. So unless there's a directive to act on it from my end, right? Right. That's that's one of the big differences with those two examples. Mm -hmm. um, because I had a clear directive to act on something without the ESSER community, so, and that was the purpose of those, right? For yeah. me to act on those, the design strategy, but if, you know, I may see school board emails with the school board at PSBT, the new one that was made, but if it's directed just to you all, mm -hmm. that's an area of conflict for me. Do I answer? <laughs> do, do is the board answer? Do I help the chairs answer? Like, who answers right. those emails? So yeah, that's, I, that's I, a, to me, that's a systems question, yeah. it, right? Like, in, in result, yeah. not always going to be a uniform answer. Right, yeah. Everybody's question, but I think. Uh, that's a huge challenge, and you also you already face this all the time. You'll have people are posting something on Facebook, and does the board respond? Does everybody on the board respond? Does one person on the board respond? Is there no response? All this stuff. You, you know, we just had a, a public comment <coughs> involving a very specific incident right. at a school. There's, I would expect that there's no way that Libby can then respond directly to that comment because it's so specific. But you might say, can you get back to us in a couple of weeks about what does happen in cases like, you know, et cetera. Anyway, right. How do we do that? Which part? How do we say, can you get back to us about outlier behavioral issues and the, 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 the support system that goes into, that is, I don't even know, I don't know exactly how I would ask, but I also wouldn't know exactly what menu I would ask because meetings have agendas and if I catch you somewhere, I might ask a question to try to get some knowledge, but I don't necessarily feel like I'm gonna ask a random question that's not related to the agenda um, in a meeting. Who wants to respond to Fred? Go ahead, Mia. I think that's a good question, Rhett, and I think that's the reason we're doing this process is to say, oh, that falls into the category of inclusion, safety, belonging, and wellness. We have on the upcoming, we have, you know, in two board meetings, we have already on the schedule a presentation from Libby and Jess Murray on how what progress is being made around that, and we can ask more specific questions about this during that. So I think that's, to me, this is, that's why we're doing this is so that we can have a place to have these conversations without them feeling like random or reactive. Yeah, no, I think I was gonna say something similar. I'm gonna feel like HHB, I mean, we've had multiple meetings on HHB and you know, the frustration of the board is we oftentimes can't react in real time. And also, you know, these are kind of, you know, continuing themes that go through. So, you know, we've had Jess come in, we've had the, the training from, you know, Heather Land. Uh, we're definitely gonna, you know, we visit Wellness and, and HHB, uh, you know, the that Mia mentioned, I'm sure we will have meetings after that. So each time, you know, we come in, like, that's the time we really, like, raise these questions, be like, well, we're hearing this from the community, you know, what's being done, what changes are being made. Or, you know, sometimes just understanding what the issue is and what the limitations are. Um, you know, the, the context within the info we get back just so we can go back and explain things to the community is important. It's, you know, our job is not necessarily, you know, someone comes in and, and, and says, I'm unhappy about this. Our job is not always to fix it. Sometimes that's, you know, there's reasons they're unhappy, but there's also reasons why the outcome is the way it was. And, and, you know, there may be changes necessary, there may not be yeah, and I don't think we need to get too granular in like how do we, you know, I just I just wanted to raise accountability as one of the things that come up for me. And it can there's such a spectrum of like the issues that are brought before us that are, you know, sort of potentially is under our purview and we could help, you know, move the needle or completely out of the scope of what we do, which is, you know, kind of what the, the issue that was brought tonight. It's like there's not really much 
you know, but I still would like to see accountability with things like that, like just one individual coming with a story. Who captured an email? Who's going to circle back to that person and let them know we heard you? Who's going to connect them to the proper channels of like maybe the school board isn't the place to like you know raise that issue, but you should contact the principal or you know, and we do have systems in place for the concerns that were brought up tonight. So it's just like here's connecting you with our handbook on these protocols and things like that. Like, so even that level of accountability, I'm interested in improving as a board. And I don't, you know, it's obviously not going to be me as an individual that reaches out to that person, I don't think, you know, but I still think that people should feel heard and understood and then reacted to on some level, you know, there should be some responsiveness. Well, I think if we look at that community connection and accountability, I mean, we could kind of track the kinds of things that, the issues that people are raising, right? And mm -hmm. maybe we have a quarterly board newsletter that goes right. out or something from you that goes out to the community online and that just talks about these are some issues that were raised in, in general, right? Not specific cases. Mm -hmm. And um, these are how we're managing behavior at the school or this is how we're managing communication with the community or you know if we had some kind of regular schedule for just any kind of general topics that we think it would be helpful not just yeah. at budget time right and most of the time there's like a really positive you know really positive information that we can provide people like we've actually made a lot of progress on this and like it's an opportunity for us to like reach out to the community and and make them feel you know rest assured like this is a priority of the school it's already being worked on like here's the different things that have been done over the last few years but some of that is going sort of unnoticed by the community um, well sometimes. because they don't have any they way don't of know. knowing because a lot of the stuff is private right right and but i think we could speak in general to yes. this is how we manage behaviors or this is our protocol or you know but, and i think some of it actually is being I mean, I, I, a lot of the conversations I have with community members when you engage them, a lot of people are very pleased with what they're doing and noticing what we're doing. They, but when they're feeling that way, they don't come and often not tell us that. Yeah, an example that's rising to my, which I told all of you already at a meeting, was like I went to a middle school sort of welcome meeting with Julie, and there were some things that she was talking about where everyone was like, huh, I didn't know we had that. And it was like, it was all news to them, you know, and it's not, it's not bad. It wasn't yeah. like a bad reaction. It was just sort of like, oh my gosh, that's so exciting. I didn't realize that we had that. And it was like, oh, darn, that wasn't, that should be an opportunity. I don't know how, <laughs> yeah. but that's why it's a goal. Yeah, it, yeah, that's exactly right. right. That's what I was thinking. That's why it's risen to the mm -hmm. top as a goal, because we all <coughs> feel that there is a need for all of us, including the administration, to, to, to reach out to the community. Yeah. And so if you make that a goal, that gives them an opportunity to work on it and to exactly. see how we can improve in that, right? Yeah. We, we certainly see a need to improve it, right? So then we put processes and come up with, with the administration's help. We can yeah. come up with these things. So I want to... Uh, yeah. uh, maybe I'm getting us off track. I'll just really quickly then... going to take us off track. <laughs> Go ahead. I hadn't thought about the whole, like, follow-through before, so thank you for explaining that like it would be helpful to be able to like have a plan for connecting people with because a lot of times there is an answer and it might actually be a satisfactory one. but I do want to caution I think you know this happens in my job as well is Libby does blogs she does podcasts she does regular updates we have twice monthly board meetings where we have the right so like you can lead a horse to water but I'm not sure I don't I I'm very cautious about it. whenever we make an ask or come up with an idea that we then hand off, then we have to take something else off of the administration's plate to make room for that. We can't just keep piling. So I actually don't know what else we could ask of them for the connection with community. Maybe that's something we need to own a little bit more as yeah. a board. Yeah. yeah, and that's, I mean, that's what I'm wondering, because there is a lot of information out there. I mean, like, mm -hmm. you, know, you just well, named maybe. a few. There's also... You know, all four of the principals put out you know weekly weekly yeah. newsletters. Um, I don't read them all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so you know yeah. It's just I think I think there are a lot of people who are busy. Yeah. And when they see something sideways, you know, 
they they notice, but you know, oftentimes, you know, it's not until they you know do something that they're kind of a captive audience in, in front of Julie because they're there for an event, and they're like, oh, right. like, she's telling me. I mean, my guess is probably a lot of information she told them had been in you know the the email she sent out weekly that you know went unread. So so you know, I, I definitely agree we need to do a better job of connecting, but I also think. You know, we have to be realistic that we're not doing nothing in that front. So this is into the weeds, and I'll get out of it really quickly. But it, you know, if you, um, if you, there are certain blogs, or you, um, let's say, there's a publication, and there are articles about many things. Oftentimes, at the at the base of an article, it'll list visibly what the keywords are. Right? This article addresses you know, this this person's name, uh, these themes. Right? I don't know how much work that would be. You know how much it would be. Thank you. That's good. Idea. Right? Because like yeah. you do a blog thing, or or the the principal writes. Um, so, at the you know uh, salon so, salon salutes. Um, there's information about uh, basketball, um, French exchange students. You know, it's a few sort of almost hashtags. You know, and if you sort of develop that ecosystem, then then Emma gets an incoming call like rah. This happened. I'm so upset. Right. So here's let me show you. Here are some links to what's already out there. If you still have questions, can we, or something like that. Anyway. Nathan well, reads the news. <laughs> <laughs> um, the students are here currently. Yeah. I, I yeah. just want to say one more thing quickly, and that is, all of you have kids in the school or you work in the school. I don't. And so when you talk about all these resources, right. I'm not familiar with them. And I'm new to the board, so I'm just, you know, I'm figuring this all out. Well, but I think for, for other people in the community who don't have kids in the mm -hmm. school, there must, maybe we need to let them know that all of this information is available somewhere. I mean, but another thing that might be easy to do is <laughs> make sure that information gets kind of easily archived. So um, like all the, you know, Gator News and so on, salutes are just, on a page, like, you know, kind of listed and with a couple keywords. So that way, if someone's like, I feel a little out of touch with the high school, I've been busy, what's been going on, they can go and instead of like hunting through their emails, you can just, you know, read down like, oh, like. And just for everybody's information, they are posted on our website. Yes. All of them <laughs> and archived on our website. Okay, so I'm gonna. Mia's got a question. Yeah. So that goes off in a different track. Yeah, she can go and then I'm, then I'm my turn. Okay. <laughs> I have a question that will switch gears when we're ready. Mia, please move on to a new topic. <laughs> new topic. Um, well, as a segue, I'll just say my two cents on the community engagement and accountability. Um, I'm thinking of that as a um, more, I, I'm just agreeing with those who said this is a little bit more of the board function. Uh, that, that falls into sort of like a board function goal for me than more of a, um, a student outcomes kind of goal. So I'm think I'm also thinking about it as far as like what is the what sh what more could the board be doing on that? And the question that I wanted to ask get brings us back to the academic achievement um, theme. And I'm thinking about what Nathan said at the beginning of this conversation, where he was naming things that you know asking us to think of things in categories of important and urgent. And I'm wondering if we as a board want to narrow this goal down to address something that we have been hearing is urgent, um, which would be literacy, and say that actually for the next couple of years, the board is going to have a real focus on literacy and not just, not obviously not just a, academic achievement, but not have it be too so broad as to address academic achievement. So I just wanted to pose that to my fellow board members to think, to see if you think that that would be appropriate. I, I mean, like my thought is I want to hear more, I mean, because we've heard a few voices on literacy. We've also heard about closing the achievement gap for several years. I mean, I would like to hear about where the administration really feels, because I know literacy is a, a loaded topic and, and we're not experts. I would, I would like to hear from the administration about kind of what they feel the the focus for closing the achievement gap should be. I know literacy is a big piece of that, but do we want to be that narrow in focus? Because I know there's a lot. It is completely up to the board. I can see both ways. 
I mean, would you miss yeah. the information on math <laughs> if you weren't yeah. getting that information? Like, that would just be my question. Is, would you miss the other stuff? And, and we haven't had a, I mean, we have not had like a real deep dive on, you know, how you're teaching literacy, your approach to literacy, you know, your interpretation of the information we were presented. I mean, um, you know, very smart and educated parents, but, you know, not educators. So I'm sure you have opinions on the yeah. information that was presented. So. I mean, I'd like to hear a little more, my, my thought is I'd like to hear a little more from the administration about the approach to literacy and where you feel the deficits are before I would want to limit it specifically to that. Because right now we have, I think, a sliver of information and not the whole lot. I also think highlighting literacy as like yeah. narrowing the focus <coughs> wouldn't be to the exclusion of us hearing about math data, right? It would just be, it would just give you a direction to say, for the next few years, maybe literacy can be elevated as a priority. Um, so literacy ha is our priority for I the know, next couple years. Is. So that yeah. that is a, we're actually moving away from some of the PD with math, um, specific targeted PD with math, because mm -hmm. um, we've been there for a while. Right. So uh, we are moving it. My only concern with, with that is not really a concern because it matches what we're doing anyway. Mm -hmm. um, would be if the you know it's it's the summer the board's in a retreat. We have plans in development around literacy, and the board says no. We want to hear all about science. Like science should be your priority for the coming years. That's where the <coughs> that's where I'd have to say wait hold on <laughs> hold on that you can't just change that in July you know kind of thing. So that would be my only concern for years down the road. I also think saying saying close the gap, academic achievement and closing the gap mentions nothing about curriculum or, or teaching methodology. So I think like the concerns that you're raising are sort of second, you know, not under our umbrella and not really related to this goal. It's like if she can show us that they're closing the gap and increasing academic achievement, I'm not sure that we're going to even dig into what methods are you using. You know, it's like the proof is in the data. So I had a question. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, when we, when, when I think about literacy and I know how important that is, I wonder about what's happening in this building and what's happening for kids that are going in many different directions and that need support in many different directions. The multiple pathways doesn't come up as one of our priorities here, but I wouldn't want to lose, I wouldn't want to have the kids in this building that are doing so many different things not remain uh, a, a, a place where we have some focus at some times, even if it's not one of these priorities. I just, I feel like when we're talking about, we, there's sort of, a, there's a big difference to me between I feel like elementary school is like foundational learning, middle school, social emotional learning, <laughs> high school, what do you want to do? And how do we how do we find that for you? And that doesn't fit into any of these? That sort of, I, I, I don't know how that I would that it does fit into academic achievement um, and closing the gap. It would be harder if we were focusing on one content area at the high school to show different types of data. but. We can do that, you know what I mean. However, I think that you know we were just talking today about the data we collect at the high school, and knowing, for instance, um, goes into the belonging piece actually, of co students who participate in co-curriculars, and who are those students, and who are repeat students in those co because belonging matters so much. So like, we were talking about that kind of data today. It just might not fit under academic achievement. However. We haven't named what high level of learning in literacy is in high school yet. Like, what do we mean when we say that? What, what level of proficiency are we looking for? And if we name that, then I can provide data on where we are with that goal. I mean, I know there's that. And Libby, sorry. Libby, just a follow up question on that. It would be you and your team who would name what high level. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like school, yeah. Right? Not us. Right. Okay. Right. Right. Go ahead. 
Yeah, I mean, with academic achievement and then the close the gap, is it academic achievement and then like side point close the gap, or is it really academic achievement with just that singular goal, close the gap? Because if it's academic achievement period, and then also close the gap, I think things like multiple pathways could and should be included. So. I think multiple pathways falls under that one. I see, I see academic achievement for all. Because mm -hmm. you can close the gap by having everyone drop to the bottom. That's not yes. what's <laughs> not, Just to be clear again, yeah. and eliminate rumors, <laughs> not our goal. <laughs> well, so I read that as academic achievement for all. Right? Okay. That's where like the excellence in teaching. And multiple pathways is a strategy and a mm -hmm. method. For but them. even there, you can show data on there which one, which students are taking advantage of multiple pathways. Mm -hmm. What's their socioeconomic status? <coughs> but you know, what are they doing? Why are they taking multiple pathways? Yeah. There's lots of good information there that we haven't put our hands <coughs> on yet. Well, that's that is a, it's centered around closing that gap. That was what I was going to ask. It came up um, earlier around. You know, some information isn't can't be shared or isn't visible. But I think if, for example, if if you all choose or Libby chooses to track to to focus, pay a lot of attention to folks for whom there is an achievement gap, or there has historically been an achievement gap, and you look at that longitudinally, uh, and then you can tell a story and you can you can set benchmarks we think will be on the path to success if we're starting to see this curve bend this way, right? I mean, is that how? Well, we know what our gaps are in socioeconomic status and in students with special needs, yep. right? Yep. So <coughs> we'd be looking at a pretty targeted yep. uh, demographic group across multiple years because that's not going to go right. away tomorrow. Right. Um, I'm just a quick time check. I think my window of time is closing. This is, to me, looking like quite productive yeah. so far. Yeah, super. Um, I don't, uh, I suspect you all can carry this forward. I, if, it, if I'm Jim and Mia and Libby looking forward to at agendas, I would sort of put a pin in this episodically on quick rotation until you've got it resolved. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and I think that, yeah, I think we're kind of thinking along those lines too. Yeah, the agendas in terms of what we might hear about. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nathan, will you put the post-its on the bigger sheet and give those to me so I can put them on a Sure will. Well. And I'll also photograph them and send that to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, any, anything, is this anything else? That was super helpful. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, thank okay. you. Great. Um, you can get in there. <laughs> 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 You're talking <laughs> You're welcome, my pleasure, et cetera. Okay. Um, is not here. Does the equity committee want to give an update or? Mia do it. Huh? Mia? Don't, you don't, Chris is not here, so if you want to do an equity committee update, great. If, if we want to punt that to another meeting, that's fine too, if you're not feeling prepared. Well, we will have more. <clears throat> uh, I believe the deadline we gave for the equity audit was the 10th of February. So we will have more for the board in um, not the not too distant future because um, I expect we'll be bringing forward a proposal for whom to hire. But other than that, we don't have much to uh, report. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, so policy monitoring, we have approval of the D12 prevention of employee harassment um, monitoring report. Uh, do I have a motion to approve uh, D12? I move that we approve the D12 policy monitoring report. 
Um, do I have a second? I have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And <clears throat> on to policy reasons, it looks like we're doing a fifth and final reading of a20 through A24. Um, any questions, comments, edits? So the thing is, Jim, is that we haven't met as a policy committee since the last read. Yep. So there's there only are comments and changes to be made on A23. Okay. Um, but we have not made those changes yet. Yep. So I would just offer, if anyone has anything else to add at this point, we our next meeting is on the 3rd. My hope is to have these changes made at that time, and then we can move them forward for what being passed, or do we need another reading after they've been another revised? Reading if there's changes, okay. Yeah. No. So I'm not sure that we had to have them on tonight's agenda, unless anyone no. has any pressing feedback. Uh, well, yeah, no downside. So if there's anything people noticed or anything we should include before the policy committee meets. And you can you can email them to us before me too, and that way we can yeah. make sure the six is the final reading. Isn't that what they say? Six times the charm. I think so. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Sometimes even seven. <laughs> Considering there's you know five policies there. Yeah. Six readings on five policies yeah, isn't bad. Exactly. Could be well, fifteen. Could be fifteen. Three each. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we can talk about library materials. Yes, let's Sorry. talk about library materials. Do you want to uh, sure. tee it up and how it came to us? Um, yeah. Um, <coughs> so I'm forgetting her name right now. Sue. Sue Monami. Yes. How do you pronounce it? Monami. Monami, who is the librarian here at the high school, um, met with the other librarians in the district. And together, they looked at a, a Vermont School Boards Association sort of draft policy, or what? It didn't come from Vermont. It came from Vermont Librarians Association. Yeah. It didn't come from VSBA. Yeah. Um, they looked at that model policy, and they uh, sort of drafted, you know, made their own version, made little tweaks to it, changes to it, and personalized it um, for what they felt was best for this district. And so this is that draft. Um, Sue came and presented it to the policy committee and we sort of went through with some of our questions and made a couple more revisions at that meeting. And so this is the first draft of, of that policy. And so if anyone, this is the first of hopefully three reads. So if you have any um, suggested edits, we can go into the document now and I can make those as comments and then move them into the policy committee for revision. Yeah, no, and um, huge thanks to the um, to all the librarians that put thought to this. Uh, I think yeah. it's a great policy, and really appreciate them stepping up and presenting it to us. And they feel really strongly yeah. about it and want us to adopt it. Yeah. Um, so, any initial thoughts, edits, or comments? Otherwise, we can move it along for second reading. But it was interesting that it seems like family members and students can come use the libraries. Which we talked about that. <laughs> <laughs> this would be my public library. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. a great selection <laughs> I get to test. It's closer for me. We discussed possibly adding language there to make sure that people couldn't point to this policy and say, "I can come into the school anytime I want." And you know, I forget exactly what it says the if it's not disruptive. So obviously there has to be some like layer where they're like checking with the front office right. and finding out if it's okay for them to come onto campus. But we decided ultimately not to like add any stronger language than that because we felt like it was sort of self-explanatory. No coffee in the New York Times at the... <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Um. Is, there, is there anyone else in the because I have a few questions. Yeah, no, go for it, Mia. I think, I think um, floor is yours or the screen. Okay, thanks. Um, I also really appreciate this policy, and I'm excited that we have a draft of it, and I hopefully adopt it. Um, and I largely edit it. As I was reading through it, I was thinking to myself, how will we ensure that we're meeting it? And you know, it's really important to me that we have a policy committee that we can trust and that we can trust that we're going to follow it. 
And so I wondered if the intent was written up as the intent, which I think is fantastic, if that is also the outcome. And then that way we would say whether or not we're meeting that outcome. I just offer that as a question for the policy committee to, I don't know, to, to yeah. think about. Hey, and you, then yeah. there, Go ahead, Jim. What? Uh, I can call it by a computer. I, I just need to remind myself of what the intent was. I don't have it on my screen. Okay. Yeah, I've got. I've yeah, got it's, the, it's the first four paragraphs um, of it. It's entitled "Policy and Intent," and I personally, I think the last paragraph of that feels to me like that's the outcome of this policy. That's what we're striving for. Um, so I, I think the only change would be to call this intent and outcome like change the subheading of it or whatever um anyway that's just a thought that i had another thought that i had was under the implementation section if whether or not um it would make sense to have metrics um or if those are the metrics again i'm just, i am just thinking about how we you know, in future years, hold ourselves accountable and, and check and make sure that we are in line with what we want. You know, we're doing what we say we're going to do. I'd want to check with the librarians to see if mm -hmm. what metrics are possible, because I don't know, not being a librarian, I don't, I'm not sure how they categorize them beyond genre and author. So uh -huh. I would just want to make sure that um, that the metrics were feasible. Yep. For them to provide. Yeah, and, and just, I don't think it necessarily has to be numbers, um, but but I second that, Libby. That makes sense to check with them and make sure that we're not holding them or ourselves as a district to something that doesn't make sense. Um, another idea that I had, um, and I was um, using that uh, equity policy tool that the equity committee came up with and using it as sort of like a gut check on this first draft. And so the um, stakeholders came, came um, up for me, and I wonder if it would be possible to include stakeholder involvement in some way. Like maybe what we're saying is every once a year or every couple of years, we um, that we survey students to know whether or not we're meeting the intent and the outcomes of this policy, so that we are not it's not just us who are saying yeah we think that we're you know all students can find themselves in our books but in fact we're asking students to you if that's the reality for them so that was another thought that i had for the yeah you're bringing up some so, uh, some themes that have applied to just more general discussions around policy and procedure um and so one of the things has been like it that we would like to see maybe more uh, speak to metrics and sort of um, benchmarks of success in meeting policies within the po embedded within the policy. I think a lot of times um, it feels like it sort of lives more in procedure currently, that some of this stuff could live in procedure. So if we're talking about like stakeholder engagement or how many you know that once a year we survey students like something like that could uh, live in a procedure um, but we've been having that conversation about like do we do we embed certain things into the actual language of the policy so that when they're being monitored those things are being highlighted as priority mm -hmm. to report back on right yeah that's the that's the question for me is does it rise to the level of if we're you know we should we run through this as we're monitoring it is that like for example would we survey stakeholders as part of the monitoring process and i wonder if that's across the board too because i think there's a lot of policies where right. you know particularly you know where a student could, could be useful to see you know how they're feeling and you know part of it could it could be one question of several that we do you know annually or semi-annually with students <laughs> and the other thing you brought up Mia, about the, the headings, the policy intent outcomes. So that was another thing we had talked about and I think we probably likely will change because the formatting that we're moving towards is to have a statement of intent at, as the opening paragraph and then to have mm -hmm. the, the body of the policy. So mm -hmm. I think we probably will end up 
changing that. I don't know um, about the outcome section. We'll, we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. Emma, did the librarians provide the procedural document for you? I don't believe I saw that. Jim, did you see a procedure? It's oh, linked that's... It's linked on the policy, so I just oh. clicked it up. So I'm assuming the <laughs> librarians wrote that. OK. Well, I just need some tweaks. That's oh, all. yeah. But that's not something the board, that's something that, that I would write. So um, yeah. right. I, 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 there's just something exactly. there that I would change. And that's not the procedure for following policy. That's the procedure if somebody has an issue with right. something that's in the library, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I, I think the librarians may have gotten those. I, you remember what their source was, Emma? I don't think. I think they may have gotten some, the procedures from somewhere. I think both the procedure and the policy came. I think they from had, the librarian association. Yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. So my guess is that is where the procedure came from. Yep. Yep. Which is fine. There's yeah. just you know the complaint shall read the policy. Like I can't force. We can't force anybody to read anything. Yes. <laughs> you know, there's just some language in there that, that doesn't need to be there. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Well, we will, uh, yeah, that's great input, Mia, and we'll, particularly on that first section, make it a little clearer. And, um, the idea of surveillance, well, I mean, surveying stakeholders goes to the community connection piece too that we just talked about. So I think we should just give thought to that as a board about which stakeholders we want to reach out to and how throughout the year and, um, you know, getting input from not just students, but community members as well. And I think like the lens of how they feel about how our policies are being implemented is a huge one for and bless you. Um, so great, we can move on to second reading with some amendments there. Uh, amendments coming to 823. Um, and now I think we can have executive session, uh, which I'm trying to figure out the best way to make sure Mia comes with us. Um, do Somebody you want me to just logs into the meeting. Am uh -huh. I coming with you or no? I think you can go home. Okay, so yeah. one of you would just log in the meeting, and then um, yep. Let me. Anna can make that person co or can make that person host. Yep. Let me just. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, is there a reason why the executive session isn't on the agenda? Uh, we added it okay. um, at the beginning. I thought it is. The it's executive session is next. It's not in the, the draft one. agenda That's for next time. It's, it's, yeah. 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 it's because the superintendent eval committee is working to, we, we got all of the responses on Friday, did the summary Monday and yesterday. So we're just, we're just moving quickly here. Yeah. Agenda, right? um, it's on the fifteenth uh, version. Yeah, I, I, agenda. we don't need the whole special one for. Oh, for that. Okay. Uh, I moved to enter into executive session for the purposes of discussing uh, personnel. I said that. Uh, I'm gonna mute this before I draw some notes. Um. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. And you are a co-host, Jim. Uh, perfect. So you can make a breakout room.